What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here since I'm be doing a review on a device that I was sent for the purposes of the review. Now, I don't even know this company. I've never heard of this company. I'm not even quite sure the name of this dripper. I'm gonna guess that it's called the Blizz. Probably because Blizz is written on the front of it. Now, this isn't gonna be that long of a review because it is a dripper. It's pretty basic, but there are some things that are intricate with this that are different than most drippers that we're seeing on the market today. And that's usually a problem that I run into quite often. Getting another device in the mail and it being exactly the same as the next product over and over and over again. And to be straight up, that shit gets old as hell. It's like, oh, the next dripper. Guess what? Two posts. Huh. It's, it's got a squonk pen. Oh, that's metal. That's where a lot of reviewers and people lose interest because it's just the same repetitive nonsense, circumvented, circulated bullshit over and over again. What I find myself doing is I'll go back to high end for a little bit, then I'll do a couple of reviews for low end and mid and back and forth. I guess that kind of keeps me balanced just because I'm flipping and flopping between the two. And it's really nice to see something high end when we're so used to seeing so many things mass produced on so many different tiers and levels. Clones, of clones there's this device that has this metal this does have something intricate if this was just like another basic ass dripper i would not be doing it unless it had some type of authenticity to it or it was something really unique then i probably would do it i'm telling everybody right now before we jump into the thick of things that this is how it's going to go down if I continue to get drippers that are the same thing over and over, don't be upset that I didn't do a review on it. I'm tired of doing the same things. I have to do something different. I believe this is called The Blizz. That may not be correct, and this is the company up here. Now, I was sent this for the purposes of the review, but I'm not quite sure as to who it is. Whoever it is, I'll put in the description. I have to look through my emails. I'm pretty damn sure it wasn't sent to me by eBoss Vape. The boss vape, I have this feeling that it's going to be a fly-by-night company. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing because there's drippers that have came out that are a fly-by-night thing and they're really, really successful. But then it's like that group from the 90s that made that one hit, then you don't hear about them anymore, then they die in a plane crash. I'm getting that white stuff on the corner of my mouth. So what that tells me is it's time to flip it. So let's flip it. What we're looking at is the Blizz by Eboss Vape. Now, they did send me two of these. I have a silver and then a rainbow rendition, which I will show you the differences between the two right now. Kind of the uh, the rainbow sherbet approach. You know, the funny thing is, it's not actually pronounced sherbet. It's pronounced sherbet or sherbet because there's S-H-E-R-B-E-T. But I think everybody from the 90s, including myself, called it sherbet. But that's somebody's name. Ernie and Sherbert. Eboss Vape Blizz, stainless steel right on the top. You have their address of the company. There it is. This is something. Yep, this is what I wanted to go over. See this part right here? This is something that uh, strikes a little bit of turmoil in my soul. The reason being is whoever Leo X is, is fine. That's his name. I have no problem with that. What I do have a problem with is when you have something like this, which is by Leo, the Apollo. XTR. And this gentleman had passed away. It's a high-end Greek company. I can't fault him for having the same name. Now on the flip side, guys, I know you're going to be happy about what this is because this is a very, very unique flavor scratch and sniff. One atomizer, four screws, one screwdriver, three large silicone O-rings. Scratch and sniff is going to be a vanilla, maple syrup, pop-tart, cotton flavor. This is the new age of things. Instead of actually scratching and sniffing this, you just peel this off, roll it up, and eat it. And that's the same thing as vaping. It's just, I think this is the road that's going to be less traveled down. If you're into that quick vape, you could just eat the sticker. Forget scratching and sniffing it. There it is. Eboss Vape Blizz RDA designed by Leo X. There's no manual in here, so that just makes it that much easier. So in a peripheral bag, you're going to have some extra post screws, a 510 pin to make this squonk compatible, a triple tree, and some O-rings. Triple tree, you have one flat, one Allen, one Phillips. The dripper doesn't really look that bad, the stainless steel aspect. What kind of throws me off, though, is this whole apparatus on the bottom, this gold look. We all know at this point how I feel about gold-plated decks, but I think ever since the bonds, I just gave up taking away points for gold-plated decks because everything has it. The airflow on this thing is absolutely massive. I mean, just really ridiculous. And the thing is, with the top 
And the thing is with the configuration on the top, how much you could turn this and really change this. Like you see it's cut down by a quarter there, then you could cut it again and a half. Cut it even further all the way down. As you notice, there is no way to do one coil. An 810 drip tip, which has a very unique feature in it that I don't think was to be expected. Typical 810 by looking on the outside of it. However, on the inside, you'll see this cutout. I didn't even know that they could do this with acrylic. I guess if it's an injection mold, they're able to do it versus if it's acrylic block and they drill it out. But what's gonna happen here is because of this inside that is hollowed out, juice is going to sit in here and it's it's gonna get very funky and may even cause spit back. It may not be super hot spit back. This whole section on the inside is just asking to house a bunch of juice. Guys, listen, when you first get your device, please make sure you clean it. You see what I'm wiping off here? That's just funk, ladies and gentlemen, funk. Blizz RDA, absolutely shiny as hell. That is gold though. I know it does appear silver when looking at it in certain ways. Designed by Leo X. 2007 July 28th this device is eight months old oh my god what no you didn't sending me some shit from 2003 that can't be a thing flathead screw which is going to be your grounding screw for your one post this airflow is stepped as you saw when I was turning it Self-explanatory, really nice conical shape on the inside there. Not too dirty, always a good thing. Deck is where things get a little bit different. Okay, I don't know about you, but the way that I'm seeing this is this well is extremely deep, like five feet deep. And I think that's because of the reflection we got going on. Obviously it's not five feet. The deck is about four millimeters in depth. 4.33 millimeters. I had Ryan over there whispering on my ear, sweet nothings. He told me he wanted to make sweet love to me. There we go, back with the damn flathead screws. I am getting really tired of this whole flathead screw situation. Before, it was gold decks. Got away from that, fine. Now it's flathead screws. They are everywhere. They're like bacteria. Post configuration is quite unique. This can be used for multiple fashions. You can either use this in a vertical fashion, where you have one leg here and one leg down here. So this could be used in multiple fashions. You could do a vertical where you have a leg here and a leg here. They're kind of very far apart, so it would have to be a pretty juicy vertical coil. Also, the airflow is not really set up for vertical. Or you could do one here and one there. There's one issue I have with the way that these screws are is they're polarizing. They shouldn't be this way. Because if I put one leg in here and it's got some type of flat base scenario, when you go to tighten this down, it's gonna twist the leg. I mean, it's unique. They have a screw on the top and a screw on the bottom. If we're gonna run a vertical coil situation squonking on this is not gonna be optimal. There's definitely something they could have done to make this that much more unique as far as squonking is concerned. But I have to give them a big ups because in fact they did change a post configuration as I haven't seen that done before. This is gonna be a little weird. We're gonna be doing a basic build. To be honest with you, I really didn't wanna spend Fuse Clapton so I'm just taking the lazy route. I don't know if it's really necessarily the lazy route. I just don't wanna build it. So what we have is 10 wraps, 26 gauge, and this is made by hand. Don't, don't be like, oh, machine did, nope, no machine did this, I promise you that. See, now me using regular round alleviates the problem of my legs getting twisted because it's just regular round. Yeah, as you can tell, it came out pretty good. And that is regular round 26 gauge. Just because it's it's nice to kind of switch it up a little bit, change it up, do a little whippy whap. Easy. And that is a .40 build. You know who put that regular gas in your truck? That regular ass bitch you was with last night. So whenever you are wicking a dripper, you just want the legs a little bit to touch the deck like that. You can put a little bit more in there. It doesn't really matter. The reason why I'm doing that is so air can get underneath and really keep those coils cool. T 
tasty. Ooh, what is this? I ain't no shortcake. I really don't want to use the drip tip that came with this. All right, guys, so what we're looking at is the Blizz RDA by E Boss Fape. Let's bring it on the top. Back on the top with the Blizz RDA sitting on top of the Raven's Moon. Yeah, I was very unaware that this dripper is a year and some change old. Kind of figured that out when I opened it up and saw it on the bottom. 51.5 watts at 0.40. Let me show you some of the vape production. Let me give you one more. The airflow that I'm using on this is that little bit of airflow. Now let me explain why. This fully wide open is about as much airflow as an original Dark Horse. If you don't know about a Dark Horse, that is one of the first drippers ever made that have absolutely immense amount of airflow we're talking phenotype l airflow absurd this is wide open this is this is absurd it's it's, it's like inhaling air with your mouth see how that thinned out the cloud a little bit you see that thinned it out it's not as dense and that's because i'm adding more airflow than what those coils are producing this dripper i feel is designed for someone that's just getting into vaping this is not going to be something that someone that already vapes is going to pick up just because the price point of this this is older I, the drip tip is a little funky how it's got that cut out on the inside the amount of airflow on this even when you cut it down to a quarter is still a lot of airflow but the good thing is is with the top cap is you're able to cut that down almost to a mouth to lung situation there you go that's mouth to lung just clam my throat up that's all i'm doing oh I have no idea how anybody does mouth to lung RDAs. I just can't do it. I just can't deal. It's just not for me. First off, the drip tip on this thing is just not nice. I don't like it. As Bree said, it's entirely too smooth. Because that's always a big negative. You never want something smooth, especially when it's going in your mouth. No, but for real, let's be serious. Drip tip. The way that that's cut out, not a big fan. We all know at this point how much I love gold plated decks, so obviously that's two, three points plus because it's I, I love it i love gold-plated decks just like i like gold-plated jewelry that's why you always see me wearing it on my neck and in my ears it's just the way that i like to do things here's your word of the day even my aglets are gold-plated there's a word for you go look that up go figure it out pause this good you found it that's the one I have a bunch of those. I think we know at this point how much I have an infatuation with shoes. There's always laces, wedges, corks, high heels, boots, turkeys. So one of the other big cons I have is you can kind of see the situation with the gold-plated deck. I don't like when they take a dripper and they make the deck actually visible. They should have a cap that goes over the whole thing. Granted, I get the argument that having that lip is going to stop juice from running off, but even if you have an O-ring in there, you're going to alleviate a lot of the juice that's going to come from the dripper anyway. One of the things that I like on this is the deck. I know you're going to look at it and say that, why did you use regular ass round wire, Jay? Well, listen, I'm always doing fused clappings. Why not switch it up a little bit. Why not change it up? Do something a little bit different. Plus, there's a lot of argument and speculation out there that you're going to get the same flavor from regular round than you will Fuse Clapton. Try it. Just try it. I'm not going to lie to you. I think Fuse Clapton gives a little bit more flavor than regular round just because of the surface area, the little holes in there. You got juice going between the wires, so it's going to produce a little bit more flavor. Obviously, more vapor because of surface area, but I don't know, they're pretty side by side, neck and neck. If you don't know how to do Clapton's, Fuse Clapton's, you could easily do regular round. And that leads me to the next thing. The machining on the top cap isn't bad. I feel that the machining of the top cap is worth more than what the price point of this dripper is all by itself. How would I rate this dripper on a zero to 10? 3.54. This dripper is not for me. It's not. It's not like it vapes horribly or it's a terrible dripper. It's just the whole gold platedness, the, the, the lip that you see on the outside, the drip tip. There's a lot of negatives and fallbacks for me to really enjoy this dripper. Again, if you're just getting into vaping and you don't want to spend 50 or 40 bucks, you could find this for like 20 beans. 
it's that cheap. Let me give you a better example of what the airflow would be like for those of you that are in the newer age of vaping. Something like the Bonsa wide open is what this is like wide open on the sides. It's a lot of airflow, which tells me that this is going to be designed for really big coils, but you can't fit big coils inside of the post. Plus, you risk the chance of possibly twisting and warping your coils because of the way that the screws are. That's it. That's my rating. 3.54 is about as high as I could go with this. If I would have known that this dripper was a year old when I first started doing the review, I probably would not have done the review, but it's done and it's over with. At least I could say I got that one on my list in my portfolio of absolutely phenomenal drippers not to buy. And I've kept it real. Have you? Check yourself.